money. Russell Wilson's made so much money in his career. This is about legacy. We were at, not long ago, we were at a point talking about Russell Wilson like he was on the, on the track to Hall of Fame. Which he was. And then, he, you know, obviously these past, you know, three years, whatever it's been, it's kind of et cetera. I think this is about his legacy. Russell Wilson, he is what, er, what all of us have been talking about in the media. He wants to go to a situation where he can put all this noise to bed. Okay, so the first shoe has fallen. So th that has happened. Now we've got that there. And as Shefty alluded to a moment ago, we also had Baker Mayfield uh, get a terrific deal to stay in Tampa yesterday, and we had Mac Jones traded for a sixth-round pick. So where does that leave us, Shefty, as we are now rapidly approaching legal tampering? we got the Kirk Cousins yeah. of it all out there. You yeah. have the Bears and Justin Fields still trying to figure out what they're going to do there. Bring us all the fans who are getting ready. Set the stage here. Okay, here's where we're at this morning, Greeny, as we get ready for the negotiating period to open at noon today and the signing period to open Wednesday at 4 o'clock. As you alluded to, Kirk Cousins is the biggest free agent out there, the biggest quarterback domino that is on the street. I think there's been this speculative narrative that he's going to wind up in Atlanta, and he might eventually wind up with the Falcons. I think the two primary suitors for his services – are the Minnesota Vikings and the Atlanta Falcons. But the Minnesota Vikings are not going to let him go without fighting for him. And he's in Minnesota. They are the incumbent and still the team that would have to be beat. There have been ongoing discussions to try to keep him there. Again, Atlanta would have to step up in a way to essentially pry him loose from the Vikings. And the best I can tell, I don't know that that will happen. We shall see here when the negotiating period opens afternoon. That would be the biggest domino. So let's look at it from two different ways, Greeny. If Kirk Cousins stays in Minnesota, the Vikings compete. He comes back from the torn Achilles. Everything's good. Justin Jefferson's happy. And the Vikings pick up where they left off last season. If he goes to Minnesota, the interesting part becomes what about Atlanta? Now, if Kirk Cousins goes to Atlanta, problem solved. They have their quarterback move on. But if not, they didn't get Kirk Cousins. Baker Mayfield was on their list of quarterbacks and a potential replacement if they couldn't get Kirk Cousins. But Baker Mayfield has a three-year agreement with the Buccaneers. Russell Wilson might have been of interest to the Falcons. He now has a one-year deal in Pittsburgh. So if the Falcons are unable to get Kirk Cousins out of Minnesota, what do the Falcons then do for a team that has said that the quarterback is the team's biggest Priority. I believe they pick eighth in the draft. It's they a do. tough spot to be in to get one of the top three guys. Do you try to trade up? They're going to have to pour their resources into somewhere. Would you rather try to overpay Kirk Cousins? Would you rather try to overpay in the draft to move up? What are you doing yeah. if you don't get Kirk Cousins? And I guess everybody, again, this will bring us to the next option, Justin Fields, because at one point he was connected to Atlanta. And there mm -hmm. are people in the organization that do support Justin Fields. But here's the issue. It has been the issue, at least as of right now, before any of these quarterback dominoes started falling. The Rams or the Falcons hired the former Rams defensive coordinator, Raheem Morris. Raheem Morris hired the former Rams quarterback coach, Zach Robinson, to run his offense. So we have two Rams officials, not to mention the Rams influence, where they would like to run an offense similar to the one that Sean McVay has in Los Angeles. Justin Fields, in a perfect world, would not be the guy to do that, which is why they have been interested in Kirk Cousins and Baker Mayfield, who played for the Rams after the Panthers released him, and maybe even potentially Russell Wilson, who played under Shane Waldron. Those were the options. Justin Fields hasn't been the primary guy. Now, if they miss out on Cousins, Mayfield, Wilson, could they go to Justin Fields? Potentially, they could reconsider. But again, I think the Falcons are in a tough spot if they can't get Kirk Cousins out of Minnesota. I just go back to Raheem Morris's press conference down in Atlanta where he mentioned the reason I'm here is because they didn't solve the quarterback situation. Mm. And so if I'm Atlanta, I'm moving heaven and earth to try to go get Kirk Cousins. It just makes so much sense. Like, no why would you – like, if you – if you, man, if you don't get Kirk Cousins, if you're Raheem Morris, I'm in panic mode. Because what is out there? Do I want some rookie quarterback – you know, we, we just saw the list of quarterbacks on the 2021 draft, right. right? We just saw that. Like, that would scare the living daylights out of me. I want a guy in Kirk Cousins who, by the way, 
plays in the same type of system up in Minnesota, and it would like you wouldn't even have to worry about verbiage or anything. It would just be you would just transfer it over. Putting on my much criticized GM hat here for a second. Yes, yes, yes. So I, can, I, I still feel bad about that. Okay, okay. I got two for the price of one. If you're Atlanta, stretch on Kirk Cousins with the eighth pick. You can take Dallas Turner. You only had 42 sacks last year, which was 21st in the league. He had a great combine. Now all of a sudden, you have your starting quarterback and the best pass rusher in the draft. Orlovsky, I got 10 seconds. I'm going to give you the whole next block, but go. Yeah, number one, I I think Kirk Cousins is the massive domino for a bunch of teams. Number two, I think Atlanta can get up. Number three, Justin Fields is the opposite of Russell Wilson. Mike T., you said last week, if you trade for Justin Fields, you're basically guaranteeing $28 million over two years. That's an expensive cost with an unknown in comparison to Russell, who's going to cost you one for this year.